This is the Bendix out of a starter, and I'm going to briefly explain how this functions. If you already know how it works, check the description to skip ahead. This gear engages with the starter motor. This ring gear engages with the engine's ring gear. And this is a one-way bearing, which allows it to spin one way but not the other. There's also a helical shaft, which forces the ring gear in and out. Now what actually causes that to happen is when you engage the electric starter motor and it starts spinning it this way, this mass wants to resist being accelerated. Objects at rest, they want to stay at rest, and I can simulate that by holding it steady, spinning the electric motor gear, and it gets pushed out again, like that. Now, once it's engaged with the engine, the engine's ring gear, the resistance, which I'm still simulating with my fingers by resisting spinning it, hold this ring gear out. Now, once the engine starts, that resistance goes away, and the engine's actually going faster than the starter motor. And this starts to spin, or the load starts to spin the other direction. And because this is a one-way bearing, it's allowed to freely spin that direction, and the loss of load allows it to come back and disengage from the engine. So again, it gets forced out, is forcing the engine to spin, which holds it out. Once the engine starts, it's allowed to freely spin. There's no load on it as a result because it's, it can freely spin because the one-way bearing allows it to in that direction. And it's allowed to come back and seat. Now the difference from a normal starter Bendix and this one are these collars back here. When the ring gear engages with the engine here, centrifugal force of this shaft spinning forces these collars out. That then blocks this ring gear from going back into place. That's necessary because when our engines get to top dead center, the compressed air actually pushes them back down faster than this starter is spinning. As a result, the load that we talked about on this ring gear, which keeps it out, goes away and it drops back in place, and then you have to do it all over again. So you're only able to spin the engine over once, and that's not enough to start it. So they lock into place when the ring gear goes out, and it prevents this ring gear from going back until you let go of the starter button and this shaft stops. When it does stop, they're pulled back into place by a spring that is currently off for demonstration purposes here. Alright, so the basic order of operations here is you start the starter motor spinning, the resistance of this part to accelerating forces it out, the centrifugal force of the starter motor shaft spinning here forces this collar out, locking it in place. As it spins the engine over, like this, the engine starts. The load here changes directions, and this just free spins. You let go of the starter motor, this spins down, and these collars get pulled back into place, and it allows it to drop back down. What pulls the collars back into place is this spring, which is out for demonstration purposes.